Steve Saint, the small boy depicted in that movie, was actually on 100 Huntley Street a number of years ago telling his story and telling about the legacy that was left behind when those five missionaries were killed, a legacy that lives on to this day. Uh, the society was completely transformed by the sacrifice. He was also on uh, with two of the tribal members who witnessed his father's death and talked about what happened in his final moments. Dr. Barrett, is it amazing that a story like this could even be created? It astounds me, some of the movies that we see coming out in the year 2005 and 2006. Well, a couple of things go on here. You've got to understand, and people ask the same thing right. of those movies on the other side, like Good Night and Good Luck. They say, well, this was, must have been planned because of the Bush election to, to attack Bush. And, and uh, George Clooney said, no, it takes the average movie. Remember, I told you Narnia took 26 years. Right. The average movie takes nine years. Goodbye and Good Luck was four years. The End of the Spear, they've been trying to make that now for years. Mm -hmm. So the difference is not the last three years. Uh, most of these Christian divisions was op were open okay. uh, four or five years ago, before the Passion, before that. And what really a lot of the people behind the scenes is we started grinding these economic figures. And every year with the economic figures, we showed that if you put morality in a movie, let's say last year, last year movies with strong Christian content did very well, $106 million at the box office. Movies with moral content did $60 million at the box office, a little bit more than that. I'm not giving you the exact deep, $63 million, blah, blah, blah. And movies with immoral content did about 10 million at the box office. So this year it's going to be even better for movies with Christian content. They may not get an Academy Award. They may not get a Golden Globe. But the average person flocks to these movies wherever you are in the world. So year after year after year we've done this economic analysis. And slowly but surely Hollywood says, you know, we're going to die unless we make some money. They can grind out some films like mm -hmm. Munich. But these films are bombs at the box office. They make $8 million and die. $8 million is a million and a half people in a country of 300 million people is pathetic. They've got to make two and a half times their budget. If their budget is 180 million, that mm -hmm. means they've got to make 400 million. You know, they, they make movies like King Kong, which is just this bloated over, <laughs> and they're bombing. Right. So the track fact of the matter is we've been able to analyze exactly what makes money at the box office. We can tell them, you know, some people don't like this. I mean, we get calls from studios, how much is it going to cost us if we put an extra F word in there? And we can tell them how much audience they're going to lose. Because how can there's no, you do that? Because we do this detailed economic analysis. You know, that if it's got extreme foul language, 24 F words, you're not going to go see it. You're not going to take your son. You may go see one. But, you know, the more you put in there, you can look at the drop-off. Last year, we were calculating down to the penny what stockholders were losing at one big company that released Kinsey that only made eight million at the box office mm -hmm. and refused. It had picked up the rights for Passion of the Christ, which made 604 million worldwide, and it canceled a month out because of the negative nabobs of the left. Well, the negative nabobs, when I was at City University of New York, you always have one kid in the back who's a negative, critical, miserable, <laughs> and he needs Christ, he needs hope, he needs help. But, you know, the rest of the kids are sitting there learning. The fact of the matter is Hollywood was listening to the wrong voices. So we just started saying, we want to encourage you to do well. So you well, get more message, from commending than condemning. Your message is simple, that goodness succeeds. sells and succeeds. Right. And, and it has for centuries. You know, it was just a small group of disciples that overthrew the Roman Empire. The Roman, if I told you what the Roman <laughs> Empire was like today, we would, we'd be in an X-rated movie. You know, all the way from, uh, from Jerusalem to the coast, they, every few, uh, you, you would see crosses, you would see temple prostitutes, you'd see people engaging in acts that couldn't even be on uh, the Playboy channel. So it was despicable. It was just a few because people flocked to the church for decisions. Flo people flocked to the church for marriages. They didn't want the Roman marriages. They, they flocked to the church to protect their children. They flocked to the church for healing because this, you know, I went on Nightline and Nightline said to me about the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the Chronicles of Narnia, because I did this big book on it. They said, uh, was this just a sneaky attempt to make people Christian? make kids Christian. I said, now let's see, what does it mean to be a Christian? What it means is that you have the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, self-control. So you're telling me that you don't want love, 
You want hate. Uh, you don't want peace. You want war. You don't want joy. You want unhappiness. And actually, one of them said, yes, we have the right to be angry and warlike. <laughs> and I said, okay. you got to be kidding. <laughs> well, you know, if you don't like love, joy, peace, and self-control, you can become a pagan. I don't mind. You know, just stay in your barbarism. But barbarism is, is not attractive to most people, and that's why Syriana and these movies bomb at the box office. What do you advise Christians to do? Because I know some highly intelligent people who just stay away from the movie industry regardless of what's playing. They will not go see a movie, whether it's The Prince of Egypt, The Chronicles of Narnia, Lord of the Rings, or The End of the Spear. We must support the good. You know, you must support Christian television <laughs> first right. because that's where you get your information from. You must support Christian... Mag if you don't support the good, the other guys aren't going to support the good. You know, we, we need to vote at the box office. If it's, and Christians have abstained from the culture. You know, Christians have always had four views toward culture. Niebuhr says five. I think one of them is a repetition of the other, but that may be just my limitation. I went to Dartmouth. He was at Yale. <laughs> so one is to retreat from culture. And right. you know, I have many good friends who grew up in that community, some of them who were broadcasters, who when they got out of the retreat mode, went hog wild and then had to come back to Christ. They, they went into, you know, drug, sex, rock and roll and came back, thank God, from their backsliding. Number two is to just live within the culture, just not, you know, the Anglican church used to be called Parliament of Prayer and it didn't matter what was Parliament was voting for, they weren't, and Wilberforce is a great example of a man who confronted the whole church community to stop the slave trade. Number three is to fight with the culture, and number four is to redeem the culture. Mm -hmm. If you want to be redemptive, take the word condemn and use it to commend. Change the letters around. Go in and support Rhonda, support mm -hmm. Huntley Street, support Into the Spear, support Chronicles of Narnia. These movies are made by Christians by and large. These movies have great faith and values. They're gonna teach your children great messages, go to the great churches, support the good, and help your friends. If you're a fan, you're going to want to get the story out. Now, we're stuck in 16th century technology. I love the written word. That's why I write all these books, two or three books a year. But the fact of the matter is our kids, my daughter, 17, and, and three boys, are in the 21st century technology. She programs her iBod. She doesn't need a program manager for the CBC. She is the program manager. And we've got to help our kids to become media wise. We've got to help them choose the good. And we've got to understand they're not learning through my book, which I don't think she's read yet. They're learning <laughs> through their iPod. The next project I'd like you to take, to take on though is movie trailers because I don't, I've got a three and a half, I, I have a three and a half year old, so I don't get out to see very many movies because it's, you know, it's a big event. You have to get a babysitter and it's a date night to go out to see movies. But I'm very, very particular about what I put into my head and I do not want to see anything frightening. If my husband is away for a weekend or he travels, I want to feel safe and secure in my house. And if I see anything scary, even a scary trailer, it gets in there and I might think about it and be a little bit frightened or uneasy at home. Well, you've said a couple of important things. One, the more intelligent you are, the more likely you're, you're moved and susceptible and will cry and will laugh. <laughs> well, there, so when, that's me. When a, when, a parent, <laughs> when a parent says that their child is not uh, influenced by the media, I say your child must have the, the intelligence of a cucumber because if they've got any intelligence, they can fantasize and they can see. Number two, you know, I know some of the trailer cutters. They're wonderful people, but they're told to cut the trailers with the only kissing scene in Narnia. You know, right. if there's one right. kissing scene, they've got it because they think that that's what reaches an audience. They're totally wrong. They should have shown Aslan's resurrection. Right. They should have shown, uh, you know, walk the line, Johnny Cash's conversion. They should have shown the good parts, but they think that everybody wants to see the bad parts. They're, they, and they're told that by the studios. And the interesting thing is a lot of the trailer cutters are Christian and they just go along and they, 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 don't, uh, they object to it. So you've got to seek really good information. Don't look at the trailers. Go to movieguide.org. You know, we try to be, in fact, the New York Times just had a whole list of faith-based reviews. When we started, we were the only ones out there. And they put us as being a big headline and they said, Movie Guide didn't do any, any mental gymnastics to tell you the truth about the film. It was Brokeback Mountain. Okay. The, the Catholic site was saying, oh, this is sweet and lovable. Everybody else was sort of mincing words. We're just up front. We look at the ontology, the epistemology, we make it easy. 
Okay, looking forward to our time. I want to talk to you about Oscar nominations uh, tomorrow, and I also want to talk about the small screen as well, which has so much influence on our kids today. Looking forward to our week together, Dr. Ted Baer. Thank you.